Now the audience ha have you have seen one of your most iconic films and one of your most iconic performances. And we'll come to that a little bit later, but I thought we should start with uh, watching a picture. And uh, this is a picture. Here is a picture of a young actress in one of our very first films. It's a film that was uh, filmed in 1984, and it's called Hail Mary, directed by Jean-Luc Godard. Who is this young actress? Where was she in life? What were, were her ambitions, her dreams? Um, hmm. I think it was a period of time that was tough, you know? Uh, studying as a young actress where um, you believe something that is not there yet. You have to make a living out of it. Uh, so it was tough also because Godard was not, uh, you know, in a, when you were in a class, a theater class, the teacher is always warm and good willing and accompanying you uh, through all the layers, you know, emotional layers. And here I was in front of a director, very impressed by him, of course. Uh, but he was tough in a way because I think he was going through things himself, and I was expecting so much warmth and all, you know, from him. And I, and I, and actually, he was not playing the father; he was just playing himself <laughs> and going through himself through a tough life. So I remember speaking with um, uh, Miriam Roussel, who was the main actress in the film, uh, and she said to me, "We have no makeup allowed." Uh, and because I was getting red very easily at that time, I remember, you know, freaking out and thinking I'm going to be, my emotions are going to show so much. I'm going to be red so much. It's going to be terrible. So it put me in a shy position. Um, also, uh, one day, the day before shooting, he gave me a text, a long monologue, and I say, I'm not capable of learning a monologue just in a night, you know, and knowing it the next day. And he said to me, well, it doesn't matter. We'll put an earplug in, in, inside of your ear and you just repeat after me. And I said, um, all right. And actually, the, the morning um, when we were supposed to shoot, he actually said, no, you're not going to say those words anymore. So I worked like crazy, you know, uh, a, a good part of the night. And then... Um, Actually, I was uh, I was like kind of tense because uh, you know young actress working with Godard, looking inside of my on my um, glass, and he said, "Yeah, start like that, start like that." I said, "Okay, okay, I start like that," and I and he made me say the first lines, the first line of the film, everything I say is shit, which was one line, and I felt horrible. <laughs> yeah, I felt totally diminished. But I learned to uh, not, count on, not count on the director. I learned to uh, um, adapt yourself and not take things personally. Um, because uh, um, the tendency as an actress is to take everything you can you know, take from outside and give it and understand it and give it back. So I learned to be less... Uh, um, uh, Poreuse, I don't know how you say that, when the, the wet can come through, you know. Um, so that's that. Um, you come from a family of actors. Um, both your father uh, and your mother were actors. And in your youth, you spend a lot of time also with your grandparents, who were also actors. Um, uh, if I'm right in form. No, um, my grandfather was an amateur, but yeah. I never met with him because he died before. Right. So my grandparents, no, uh, my grandmothers, who I met, they were not actresses, All right. no. Um, anyway, you come from, still come from a family of actors, and uh, when did you um, decide that you would pursue your career as an actor? Was it at this time, or was it even as a child, or when was your like first meeting with the uh, art of acting, and, and that you that your decision that you wanted to have this as a career and as a life? My decision was. Uh, really conscious uh, decision when I was 17 and I had direct, uh, directed a play uh, in my school. Sorry, I'm going to turn to you a little bit. Um, and I decided uh, at the end of it, that was obvious I was going to do it. 
um, because the passion of it, you know, uh, that was clear. And my mother was a little worried uh, in saying, well, it's very hard to say, well, whatever. <laughs> and, um, but before that, you know, I had the sense of the p passion of, you know, creating and be on stage and trying to find something inside of you, how you can embody it. And I love playing boys, men, you know, because uh, in our theater group, there was not enough men. So I was given all the men's roles and I found it more interesting. Uh, and so, yeah, the passion was in. Um, after this film, Hail Mary, you have made, of course, so many unforgettable films. How has your relationship with acting and uh, the process of acting changed during this time until now, from your early years? Acting? Yeah. Well, it's, it's a way of knowledge, in my opinion, because you've got a, you know, taking what's written on the, on the page and, and it's about human beings, obviously, <laughs> uh, and you've got to make a sort of a back and forth between yourself and what you've got to play. So. For me, it's a way of, of observing and of knowledge. And also uh, loving our differences and, and understanding from an inside point of view and not judging from outside. So it, I think, I hope it made me a, a, a more understandable, uh, you know, listening and, and learning so much. L acting is a way of learning. Yeah. Yeah. You're, are you still learning? Oh, definitely, yeah. But also the, 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 the big thing about it being an actor is to incarnate. It's, it, it needs to go inside. And so your cells themselves have to um, embody <laughs> what your spirit is opening to. So it's the link of the, the body um, experience and your soul experience as well. And that's... For me, that's the fascination of, uh, of acting. Uh, also, you need, as a young actor, and going through time is different because the values are changing and confronting, um, confronting different directors, different views of you know, how the number of takes takes you in or out. It, it's, it's so interesting, you know, it's... Uh, I always felt that acting is a way of uh, being a philosopher in a way, but you have to incarnate. Not only you have to use the, the, your brain, but you need to link with the body. Uh, and that's, for me, that's real philosophy. <laughs> and uh, this is a philosophy, but how do you how do, you do this practically? Uh, some, sometimes you just jump into it, yeah. like you jump into life and you learn as you're going. Uh, and sometimes you analyze analyze your script, you go through all the layers, you experience it by improvisation. You, um, there's many ways of preparing a, a movie. Uh, but I'd say, you know, like uh, you can shake water and sand all together and you let it wait until the sand goes down. Acting is, is that as well, is that you have so many information, you go through a lot, and there's a time that it needs to settle down. But then when you're in front of a camera, it's another story because everything you learn, you tried, you experienced, you have to let go and comes in the moment of, uh, of uh, between action and cut, um, then comes the moment of the unknown. And that's a present time. It's recreating another, uh, it's creating a world within the world. And that's the experience of present to me. And that's why I, I never bored me in shooting a film. Uh, because there's, that's the recreation of life. That's the creation of an actor. When we first met a few days back at the airport, you were sitting there reading a script, um, fin finishing a script. And of course, you read a lot of scripts. But I've gotten the impression that you you are not an actor that only waits for uh, a script to be sent to you, but you're also very active. Like, for example, when you uh, ask Olivia Asayas to make this script for me and <laughs> to the film that later became uh, Clouds uh, of Sils Maria. Um, I think 
this is quite an unusual uh, position for an actor to uh, be able to start create create films like this or start the process of creating a film. How do you look at this? Uh, with Olivier, I say yes, uh, because we had made a film together some hours, and I felt like we didn't really meet. I'm sorry, meet. Um, because I felt like he was hiding uh, with his crew the technicality of, um, of uh, what a film requests. And so I felt a little um, um, uh, frustrated not knowing him. So when I had this idea of this, you know, women, uh, first of all, I said to him on the phone, uh, you love Bergman's films. Why, why don't you make a film with, with women? And, uh, and then... Um, and then he, he wrote it, you know, it was great. Um, but I think, you know, as, a, as an actor, it's also your, your responsibility to go and, you know, see directors you, you admire. Like Bruno Dumont, you know, he's not at his place yet in France. I mean, now it's better. But at the time when I went to see him, he was very much on the side of doing his own films, but not really being into the consciousness of uh, of uh, people making films in, in our the system in France. So for me, it was important to go and come on, get in, you know, because I think that there are directors like that, like I don't think Léo Scarrax is uh, at its, you know, place in France as Claire Denis. Uh, I think it's important that um, to make people aware of how talented we are. Yeah. And. Uh how do you, sh what is it with the directors that you like, that you choose to reach out to? Um, what, what's it, what is it that you see in them that makes you interested in working with this, this or that director? What are you looking for? Uh, I don't know what I'm looking for. Uh, I think there's, uh, how do you, can you call a relationship, you know? How do you see, how do you hear, how do you feel in the presence of somebody else? And because of the movie, because of the story, because of the vision you've got to go towards, and you don't know yet what it is, but because of the presence of the camera, the crew, and this text you have with the script, and you saw, and the other person saw, something's got to happen. So you've got to be aware, of course, and I know, I don't know here if you have directors or actors, but making a, a, a good film is almost a miracle because the this synergy of the of the you know of the whole crew and, and the artist is is some kind of um, it needs to take and you cannot predict that. It needs to come through this kind of uh, wave, you know, it's a wave that needs to take you. But I think uh, the spirit uh, you're working with is is really um, important. I remember uh, speaking with a young actress uh, lately, and she said, uh, "It feels to me that I'm not being really um, respected because I can never have silence before shooting." And for me, silence is key. If you don't have a silence before starting a scene, unless it's chaotic, and then you use the, the noise and whatever. Um, but I think silence brings uh, uh, an emptiness that something can then uh, grow with. Um, and I, I was aware of that very early on. And when I didn't have silence, I was very fierce to my responsibility as an actress. So sometimes I would stop until we get, you know, not start before I get the silence or ask the first assistant, or ask the, you know, the, uh, the director to have really that time of, to get in, you know. Um, I think it's essential. Um, you are not only an actress, but you are also a painter. Um, and you, you played a painter in the wonderful movie Lovers in the Bridge, where also featuring your paintings. And I know that you, uh, quite a lot of paint during wh when you sh while you shoot, and one of the paintings we have here, and um, uh, it's one of the of your portraits of directors, and this one is uh, Austrian director Michael Haneke, um, that you worked with uh, twice in. <laughs> <laughs> you worked with him twice in Code Unknown and uh, Cashy. Um, 
what was it with him that you wanted to capture with this portrait? Uh, you know, he's always uh, this kind of astonished by everything and always in this sort of a panic if something wrong is happening. So, you know, he comes on the set and always suspicious that something <laughs> bad is happening and want to control it. He's a controller uh, and he knows it, but that's why his films are so good as well. Can he control you? He cannot control anyone. <laughs> <laughs> That's why uh, the inside is so important because you know you can maybe control the outside but never the inside. We have one more picture of your um, paintings. Um, this is the portrait of the director Anthony Mangella, um, who directed the English Patient, the film uh, where you, you that you made you receive the Oscar later on, and the other one is a self-portrait or maybe what. You have described as an in-character self-portrait as the role of Hannah in this film. And when I looked at these pictures, you have made several of these like in-character self-portraits. It made me very curious about this relationship um, uh, with your own image because this is a, you have painted your, your own face and your face is um, not only in the movies, it's always in the newspapers and it's everywhere and then it's also on you. Um, <laughs> How, how is your relationship with this? And how did you work with this? Um, uh, with it's a portrait of the character, or is it you? Or how it's not a that? it's not a playing with an image for me. It's it's trying to recall the the f the feeling of what it was to go through a character. So and I wanted to know what was left from it. So. For me, the, going through the portraits uh, was fun because there was what is in the memory is staying in. So I was painting from a feeling more than an image. Uh, same when I did the dancing, it was, you know, what is my body expressing when I have that feeling? So a lot of the work I did with Akron Khan was from improvisation that it would take a theme and improvise and film it. And with the improvisation, we will keep a, a moment, um, a movement that is telling the story. So then I had to learn what came out of me by, you know, improvisation. And it feels to me, uh, painting is the same, is that you don't know what's coming, but you throw yourself into it, and then comes what comes. But I threw a lot of things, you know, and we throw a, a lot of the inks in the garbage because it, it was not there. But sometimes it was there and it was beyond my comprehension because, you know, I'm, I can say I'm not a dancer, I'm not a painter, I'm not, you know, it's, it's just the experience of it makes you, you know, a painter in a way. Um, but uh, often what I started with uh, were, were is the eyes because they're really the doors of the soul. So if you have the soul, then the rest can come uh, uh, through. And, and this one, you know, I don't know how it came. It's it just, uh, I know that for me, this character is related to light, is related to hope because she's going through such a dark place. You know, it's the Second World War. She lost uh, her boyfriend, she lost a good friend and she's taking care of this English patient who's like burnt and close to death. So the only way she can look is towards the light, is towards hope. And that's why it's probably it came through. And, and it reminded me of s some kind of, uh, uh, because hope is always related to youth, you know. And yeah. um, just before, we. We have watched, of course, the Three Colors Blue, um, uh, one of the films uh, in a stage in your career, maybe where you um, played uh, a few of these roles that were quite sad, that were uh, quite melancholic. Do you agree on this? Yeah. No? <laughs> no, for me, it was not sad. It's what happens in life. <laughs> you know? You've got to face it. Yeah. So how do you face it? That's the big question. Uh, without judging it, without making you, you know, think, oh my God, I'm depressed. But how you do you survive this? So you've got to go through it, walk through it. But it's not that you're depressed, it's that you're trying, you're trying to stay alive and truthful to what you feel. 
So for me, it's never been uh, melancholic or, but life is like that. I mean, if you're really honest, it's going through very tough things. But when, when I just, because I just read when I was uh, preparing for this uh, interview, there was a critic who called you the master of uh, romantic melancholia. Do you feel at home with this uh, expression? Well, mel mel melancholia, I think we all are melancholic. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we come from a place we don't know where it is, but we feel that there's some place. And, and, you know, why do we love? Because we know this place as well. Why do, do we feel good when we love? We know that place. We don't know exactly where it comes from, but it doesn't belong to you. Love doesn't belong to you. It's, it's, uh, it's an imitation of something you probably knew from the origin, but we don't know before and we don't know after. We're just uh, remembering it by bits, you know, when we're lucky. Uh, so I think we're all in melancholic. It's just that we're more or less aware of it. Um, but desire, you know, is, is a melancholic because it's, uh, it takes you in somewhere mysterious. Um, you, you <laughs> like you're also a quite political person and you have often been active in the Uyghur field also and, and um, before the election, uh, the last French election, you showed your support for uh, Benoit Hamon and uh, you have also been very active in the case of uh, Jafar Panay and many other issues of uh, free speech and artistic freedom. Jafar Panay was uh, an, is, is an Iranian director who was in prison and um, for making like illegal films. And um, during, during, during his time there, uh, you won the Best Actress Award in Cannes and, and, and during this time, you showed a lot of support to him and talked a lot about his case. And one week later, or two weeks later, he was out on bail. Um, how do you look at your... Two days after. It was only two days after. And yeah, and that was, of course... <laughs> uh, how do you see yourself in, in, in this light that you have... You are a political active, and in this case, you also have to kind of a political power and the power to change things. Well, I'm very irregular, I have yeah. to say. I wish I was more regular and knowing more about, you know, the politics and all, and be more active. But the thing is, I mean, I am very busy in, in you know, um, in working as an actress, but also with my family and also, but I try the best I can. Um, of course, when you ha you have the pri privilege to be able to speak out loud, you you do the you know that, that feels normal to me. Um, but I'm I was raised by very political parents, so it's also part of the why it feels natural to me. Um, the awareness of women in the world, you know, I, I'm I've been putting black dresses a long time ago. <laughs> um, Um, you know, uh, we're all of course you want to go to uh, social, you know, uh, subjects. I mean, when I choose a film, you know, doing a film about the Bosnian, the Bosnian uh, woman in breaking and entering of Anthony Minghella, or the John Bowman's film uh, in my country that was about the apartheid. Um, there are many films I've done that were related to a um, social subject because it's, it's our responsibility as artists and, and as human beings, and it's part of it. And talking about black dresses, you have showed your uh, expressed uh, support for the Me Too campaign, and, uh, and right now in France there is a big debate after <coughs> Catherine Villeneuve and uh, 99 others, uh, women from the entertainment and arts field, uh, criticized this campaign for be, uh, being puritanical. How, how do you analyze the situation and the, the discussion right now in France about this subject? Well, I don't, I don't want to go into it too in details, but uh, I think the way that it's coming, you know, 
in your countries, you know, in the U North European, you've been very aware of the women's situation and, and you've been forward, going forward in a lot of ways uh, for a long time. And we see you as well as, uh, you know, a symbol of your awareness of women in the world. I think it's a necessary movement. And I, I'm just hoping that men can speak out loud about it, you know, because a lot of women have been speaking, but not enough men, in my opinion. Uh, and we're missing that because uh, the, the awareness is about waking up men's consciousness. Um, and uh, I mean, it's not a perfect, you know, um, the, I know that people have been complaining about women saying things uh, too much and all, but I think um, it's a movement that was is necessary because we're talking about 10% of the world, but when we see the conditions of women, you know, in the rest of the world, there's a lot, a lot to say. So I think, I hope it's going to take, uh, you know, more, even spread even more around the world. That's my wish. In, in relationship to this issue, in relation to this issue, you have also talked about the need not only change like how the industry works, but also how, how films are made and how what films are about and the need to make more uh, feminine stories and uh, films with female perspectives. Um, how do you, how, in what way are you new in, in films when you think like this? Well, uh, from the beginning, but I was um, aware of it very early on. And that's why I refused films very early on when the women was just an object of desire. And so naturally I would go into films as a woman that would interest me just to act, actually. Uh, was it because I love playing the male part when I was in the theater class, you know, when I was a teenager? Uh, that's possible, but I was made like that because I feel like I'm man and woman inside of me. I'm not only a woman because the masculine and the feminine inside is both, is there's a 50-50. <laughs> But I'm a woman, and I'm happy to be a woman, but yet in me, there's just the consciousness of the living that we, every, every, each of us need to have. So um, I've been very privileged and lucky to have roles that um, have been interesting to my, you know, uh, my, my soul. <laughs> uh, it's not always the case, and I understand women, you know, complaining about not having roles uh, that you know, they can really um, expand and, and evolve in. Um, but also, I want to I wanna say something about, you know, there's been a lot of debate about the equilibrium, the, you know, the equality between uh, wedges, uh, women and men's wedges. And you've got to understand also that the people making decisions to give the money, and I'm, I'm thinking of... Uh, uh, the channel directors, producers, uh, financiers, they want to give the money when there's a male that is involved or two male characters involved. When there's two women, they, they don't give the money as well, as much. So this, you know, the, the equilibrium of the money has to, you know, go from the beginning because uh, they're saying, well, the, the male films are working better than the female films. But the thing is, because people, when they go and see movies, they usually go and see movies they've seen before. They have a habit of seeing something that's gonna give them a sort of comfort, because they know it. Uh, like the war films that we have and all. So to change that, it takes courage from financiers, from channel directors, but it needs to change, because women are getting angry and ang angrier um, in order to have this change. So we waiting for Cam Festival to be a little more aware of that. <laughs> um, oh, we will uh, just in a short while go and uh, have questions from the audience. So if you have questions, please prepare them. But just one, one final question. 
yesterday you received the honorary dragon award here in Göteborg and uh, this is the latest in a long line of awards and you are like dubbed the queen of French cinema and, and how do you feel about your position in your career right now and what are your plans for the future and what are you, what are, are you trying to achieve and what do you try to achieve? Um, well, I feel, you know, very lucky and privileged that, um, because my dream, um, I'm living my, I'm living, not living, I'm living my dream. Uh, but also you've got to leave your dream in order to achieve other dreams. And not that you know what it is exactly, but you've got to go into new places because I think for me, um, going to the moon is really the task of an artist. You don't know where you're going, but you need to um, go away from your comfort zones. Um, and I know I'm finishing a cycle here. I don't know exactly what it is. I have a lot of films in mind, and it frightens me in a way because uh, it feels to me I've got to go into um, new places. So when you go into the habit of always saying yes to what's easy for me in a way, you know? That's, um, that's something I'm thinking about at the moment. Um, I know I've been asked several times, you know, what about directing? And, and of course, um, it, it's, um, it's exciting because it's really going into a more dangerous place in a way, even though it feels natural to me uh, because of being in the midst of, you know, the films, you know how it's, it happens. And I've been working with wonderful uh, directors, so it's, I've seen many ways of, of you know, approaching um, uh, the work. Um, but, um, so, to not know is actually a good place, you know. Uh, not very comfortable, but it's a necessary place. As an actor, you have to go also into the unknown place. I think you get used to that. It feels to me that sometimes in acting, you would maybe die more easily. <laughs> <laughs> because you experience it so many times in a way. You feel like dying in front of the camera and not knowing what is going to happen. Um, well, it's what I like to think anyway. <laughs> maybe it's going to help me. <laughs> but. Um, I, I'm not sure I answered your question because there's no real answer. I'm, st I'm still searching. And the question is, how much is planned and uh, how much is spontaneous when you act and do the acting in your session? How can you plan <laughs> acting? I mean, you can have knowledge about, you know, the subject and, you know, what's happening inside at what moment in the story you're in. But the moment you're shooting, if you're too aware of what's happening on your face, it's going to freeze you because the awareness of outside is, uh, is a killer. So actually, um, well, of course there's an inside and an outside. And as an actress, even more, because you know what the history means and the expectation. Um, but I'm telling you, as an actress, you've got to jump into it as a, a leap of faith, because um, there's no other way. And I, I, I remember one film I tried where I was more aware of the outside somehow, and it killed me. It killed the performance. So maybe it's good to try just as to, to learn, but there's only one way for me, it's to plunge into it. And actually, my um, um, makeup artist, uh, Celine Lucien, when she's been 
and do it, making uh, when you put them several films together. And I, I, you know, when the, it has to do with the, with the outside, she's a chicken, and uh, but not me. What I'm doing here. So maybe it's not the planning we were talking about. You know how much it's coming. It's it has to come from inside. That that I have, and the reference is that how your body is responding. If I have chills, it means you're in baby. If it's only the head, you know when it's happening and you feel terrible, you feel ashamed if you're not linked. Um, but definitely it has to come from a sensation. And lately in acting, that's been my, my, um, my reference, is the sense, you start from a sensation and then acting is kind of like this. Um, I have, uh, depends on, uh, on, you know, what I'm going through, uh, but lately I've noticed that I don't put music uh, very much, also because each time at home I was putting music and the two kids say, no, no, <laughs> so they wanted to put their music, so I, I have a tendency of stopping putting music on and putting a lot of music when I'm driving by myself, um, but, um, it depends on the roles, um, but I remember when I was listening to some music over and over and over to specific um, um, roles. Uh, one that comes to my mind now is uh, in Chekhov playing Nina of um, the Seagull. I, I put on Skriani uh, over and over because it moved me. Um, Lately, I've been Barbara with uh, Alexia Caro, who's a soloist pianist. Uh, so um, we listen to a lot of Barbara, but also he was playing with Kim Bach. And I felt so um, nourishing with my soul. But I have to say that silence is something that has all the music. And so silence is, um, is really what I need. But I love, I love the listening to music, and I sometimes wonder, why don't I listen to music more? Because it's like it's really a, a gift uh, for us human beings. So it really is comforting and gives me joy. Um, so that's that. I don't know if I answered. The question is uh, one of the ladies' favorite movies, it's uh, Chocolat, and directed by Basse Hadassar. How was it your experience? He was the most uh, delicious director. <laughs> <laughs> um, very easy to work with, always very positive. If I wanted to do another take, he would, you know, he would do it. He was um, very light and Easy. We, we, we went through a very joyful shooting. 
Uh, I myself went through these dark feelings. I just had a baby and she was only a few months old and I had a knee operation. So I could not bend. So even for some time in she would say, well, you sit down on the floor. I say, mm -mm, sorry, I can't. <laughs> so we had to do some adjustments, but mostly it was a very um, joyful, and it shows, I think, in the film. Um, say that again? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, he's an amazing musician. Yeah, very good uh, uh, guitarist. And, and, uh, no, there was a lot of... Uh, Love on the set and enjoying, um, you know, humping them and eating while they were trying to lose weight. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's very hard to answer that one because I learned from them all, even the most, you know, the less interesting films, I'd say. Um, no, it was a lot of sharing, actually. So I cannot say one is better than the other. No. And uh, the question was, uh, she just mentioned earlier that you had the five to retake in uh, the Victoria film. And uh, what take was it? It was not retake, it was to make a second take. So it was only, I was just allowed to have one take. And when there was a technical problem with the sound problem, or the, then we were allowed to do the second take. So after a while, I said to Kislovsky, I have a, 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 a technical problem. Can I do it again? <laughs> ah, uh, when I put my fist on the, on the wall, well, um, So the, the um, action, the, uh, the director, Kislevsky, asked to have, uh, for me to have a protection. And the makeup artist had thought about it, and she rehearsed it a lot. And it just happened that when she put it on, the first tape was not staying, so you, it, should, it would show, actually, that it would, would come out. So, um, so we didn't know what to do. And I said, never mind, I'm just doing it, and that, that, that's it. And Kislovsky got so angry with me. He said, there's no way you're going to hurt yourself. And I said, but that's not a big deal. I said, no, you don't do that. And he got really pissed up. It was the first time I saw him like that. And because there was no solution, we couldn't come back to that place to shoot it. The money was tight. Time was tight. So I finally, I did it. But then it was showing it couldn't heal because of makeup. So for about, um, I don't know, three weeks, I was in, in this kind of scratch. Uh, it doesn't show that much in the film, but I, I remember being a big scene for that stuff. <laughs> I think we have time for two more questions. Uh, please, sir. Um, what kind of just a question to repeat the previous question. Um, uh, the gentleman said that you were funny in uh, the film. Um, it's uh, what's, what's the title? The Couch, Couch in New York. Um, uh, and I think most of you make more comedies, but I, you are doing comedies. Um, I do. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've done about 10, 12 comedies, um, which I consider quite a lot. <laughs> but I think, you know. Certified copy is not considered comedy, but I laugh a lot when I see the film. 
So I don't know what you think of, you know, what it is in a comedy. For me, there's always comedy situation. It depends how you look at them. So, and also I'm a happy person at this time, so it's not that I need to make comedies. <laughs> Thank you, I'll try. <laughs> okay, one last question. Maybe someone has one up there that has a question. No, then you go down again. Okay, okay. The, didn't you want to? Okay, that's fine. Have you ever thought of a Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and the only thing to do If you had how much money you had wanted and you were able to be directed to it, what subject would you choose for it to be directed? I have several subjects, but I have to keep them in secret because uh, otherwise it wouldn't be a surprise. <laughs> in several countries, actually, uh, with their portraits. Uh, I don't know how many portraits there were. No, I can't remember now. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we travel in China, Japan, Australia, in Europe, in America. It's a very emotional job to be an actor, and there is a lot of emotion on set. So does it happen a lot that you fall in love with the other actor? Very good question. <laughs> Actually, yes. <laughs> Definitely, because you open up so much. And you know, I was wondering, because I, I work with an acting coach, uh, Susan Batson, and I love working with her and preparing, because she's, uh, she's an inspiration for, for me. And, uh, and I said to her, how come as actors, you know, we go through, or directors, we go through so many stories, love stories, and dramas and stuff. And I said, well, very much because we, we have to, you know, open to each other so much in order to let it happen through the camera. So it's a, there's something natural that we need to explore. And that's probably uh, love life is your way. <laughs> Interesting, let's say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Give it a look.